Hey, I'm Matt Avery, and I'm at the 2022 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, and I am so excited to be the host of the GMMG Legends Invitational. Now, this is the largest gathering, the largest public gathering of arguably the pinnacle of fourth generation Camaro performance, the 2002 Berger Supercar Dick Harrell Edition. There are nine on display, and in this video, you're gonna be able to find out more about them directly from their owners. Hey everybody, I am Matt Avery and I am here at the Muscle Car in Corvette Nationals in Rosemont, Illinois, 2022. And man, I am with a very special group of cars. This is the GMG Legends display. This is a gathering of nine of the pinnacle fourth generation Camaros built by Berger Chevrolet and GMMG in Marietta, Georgia. They are called Berger Supercars, the Dick Harrell Edition. So I was the host of this display. I've done a lot of research into these vehicles. And so I wanted to have their appearance here at McCacken for a couple of reasons. One is, is that this is the 20th anniversary of these cars. They're all 2002s. So here we are 20 years later. What a great opportunity to get them together. This is actually the largest gathering of these Camaros since they were new. So it's a very special opportunity for guests to see these cars up close. So a little bit about the model's history, how this car came together. Uh, this was a collaboration between Berger Chevrolet in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and GMMG in Marietta, Georgia. Matt Murphy down in Georgia, Matt Berger up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. They have the idea to build a radical vehicle like this and offer it to customers. So they take inspiration from a GM show vehicle that was at the 2002 Woodward Dream Cruise. They pull panel, they pull the molds off of uh, a pilot vehicle, a clay car as it were, to actually be able to replicate the look. And so a total of 30 coupes and t-tops are built and again we have nine of them so some of the hallmarks about what you will see you can see obviously it's got the badging on the side for dick harrell it's also got upgraded wheels and tires these are fixies and behind them are corvette brakes it also has this really readily identifiable wide body look to it that was a, a hallmark of these cars both in the front and the rear and then again you have the upgraded wheels and tires and then the Dick Carroll edition. Now a little bit about Dick. So Dick was a famous drag racer from the 1960s that was a longtime Chevrolet supporter and he raced for Chevrolet. And he was also very instrumental in the 1960s 427 Camaro programs, both with Nicky and Yanko. So what a fitting tribute to name these cars after his work. So as you come around to the back, you'll also notice some of the hallmarks of this Camaro. You've got the high wing, that lettering Mr. Chevrolet is the nickname that uh, Dick Harrell had just because of his affinity for the brand. You can see on the far right, you can see that they have the Buy Berger badge with the GMMG badge. And then the other identifiables, you have the black satin black painted tail panel. That's another callback to big block Camaros of the 1960s. So this is car number one. And then right behind it, we have car number four. Now, this is a special car uh, for a couple other of reasons. We have on display here within the nine, we have two very special pairs of Dick Harrell Edition Camaros. So this is one of them and that was one of them. So uh, number one and number 30 are the historic bookend pairs. We have those on display. Number four is part of the Sunset Metallic Twins. There was two of these Camaros painted in this really vibrant orange and they're both on display, number four and number 15, which we have. All of these Camaros were numbered. You can see here at the base of the windshield with the silver lettering. And then it would also be numbered up at the wind, at the, at the uh, front of the rear view mirror. Now, in addition to the paint on this example, car number four, a very unique option is underneath the hood. This was actually fitted with a 454 cubic inch V8 by the original owner who is on display. I'm so excited. Many of these cars on display are actually still in the care of the person that owned them new. So this is one of them, very neat car. Another unique element of it, you can see it's got the white interior. That was an option that owners could select. Really a stunning, stunning combination as it's set up. So moving back a little bit more, we have, this is car number six. So this is another original owner example. The gentleman who is displaying the car bought it new, really striking in this blue, really great example. And then of, of course, there was a little bit of accenting. So the earlier cars, the stripe 
was more of a, a dark gray. Here you can see white, just a, a really spectacular combination. So this one, as identified by the lettering on the hood, this is a 427 cubic inch V8. That is the C5R Corvette race motor. That was an upgraded option that many customers could select. And then another option that many uh, customers chose was of course you can see the roll cage. So keep in mind that all these cars are street legal. Really speaks to their radical nature that they are track ready vehicles you could purchase right off the showroom floor. As we move back here, we have car number 15. Now this is the sister to car number four. This is also painted in sunset orange metallic. We have this one here. This also has been fitted with that C5R race motor. And then inside, you'll notice that this one has the pretty standard interior upgrades that these cars would have received, the headrest embroidery, and then the new seat inserts. As I mentioned, all these cars are either T-top or coupe. This one's a T-top. And then here we have car number 17. This is, I think if I had to pick a favorite, this might be one of mine. It really looks sharp with the red and then the gold. And then inside the gold, you can see it's got that engine turn look that was so prevalent during the 1960s. Really great combination. Underneath the hood, as you can see, it also has the uh, C5R, the 427 cubic inch V8 engine. Another thing you'll notice is that these signatures are prevalent on these cars. That was a big part of celebrating heritage. People that were connected to the cars when they were built, and then also people connected to Dick Carroll uh, and his legacy also were able to sign the vehicles. Really nice tribute. Okay, let's move back further. Let's check out this. This is example car number 18. It's impossible to miss. This is a house of color, organic green, custom paint, and man, does it really look sharp here. Now, you'll notice that this is a 400 horsepower. This would be considered a stage one of the Dick Carroll, kind of the where things got started when it came to ordering these cars. Obviously, from there, the options went up. Inside, you can see, again, the same seat upgrades with the headrest embroidery. Custom paint would have been an option that customers could select. So we come back, we have car number 20. So this one is also considered a, a stage one or a phase one with the 400 horsepower rated engine. This one's a little bit easier to see a lot of the signatures here. You can see this is Valerie Harrell, so that is Dick's daughter. And then underneath her signature is Scott Settlemeyer. Scott's a, a key figure. Uh, he was very instrumental in the fourth gen generation Camaro program. He was on staff with Chevrolet and helped to allocate the quantities of cars for this program and other programs as well. Inside some of the other upgrades, you can see this one has an automatic. Customers could opt for either a manual or um, automatic transmission. Red painted brake calipers were the norm. And then as we come back, we've got our uh, cars eight and nine here. So this is car number 23. This is the only car of the run to receive this style fixie wheel. So that's a little bit unique on this one here. This also would be a a C5R race motor as identified with the 427 cubic inch call out on the hood. And then finally at the end of the row we have car number 30. This would be part of that historic bookend pair. Uh, the last car that was part of the run and it really is significant because uh, what Matt Berger and Matt Murphy set out to accomplish with these cars, building 30 over the top radical fourth generation Camaros was very ambitious. These cars were very expensive, well into six figures when they were new. Like this is 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. All these are street legal and all of them were sold through the dealership. It's a very impressive effort. And to have nine of them in, in one spot is just a thrilling opportunity for Camaro enthusiasts. And I think the only place that you would see this is at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. So if you want to learn more, I do have a new book coming out called Camaro Special Editions. I have one of these Dick Carrolls on the cover. I encourage you to check it out. You can find out more by heading over to my website, themattavery.com.
So the Dick Carroll edition package pretty much came about in, um, well, towards the latter part of 2003, it was in discussion. But the GMMG car itself is a very unique package. Um, what is really intriguing about it is how they took the, you know, the best of the best and tried to, you know, refine what GM did and enhance. The Dick Carroll is based off of a, uh, uh, basically a prototype of a, a Woodward car that, that GM produced for a particular show. And then they decided to see if they can market it as uh, you know, a low production run. So, Berger Chevrolet actually produced and you know, put this package together by obtaining all the leftover 2002 Camaros. And this is pretty much late 2003 um, to, to put this whole program together. So, what's unique about it is they took everything from the past that they done for uh, the fourth gen package and enhanced it by including this the wide body package um, and you know, what really made it unique is is how it came together you know the thought process how to refine some of the products which came out to be a you know outstanding vehicle so uh, this particular car actually is unique in a way that it was based on a car number six. We picked car number six, VIN number six, and, and it's a blue car was the original prototype. So um, you know we use that as our you know as our, our guide in a sense. So uh, we did improve it with the electron blue, which is a Corvette color, and this is what the end result was. And uh, you know we've had this car since I guess it's now been about. 18 years now, you know, it's been a long time. So it's very, um, how can I describe this? It, it handles great, um, the power is phenomenal, okay? Um, and, you know, if you're not careful, it can get away from you big time, you know? But, um, you know, the handling package, you know, the braking, it's, you know, it's been enhanced with Corvette brakes, uh, with the tires, and the way they design the suspension. Um, it is actually a, a, a very nice handling and driving car. We actually took it on Road Atlanta, we did a few laps, it was just a fun experience, but uh, you know, the biggest thing about the car, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the car is one thing, but, you know, it's the people that were surrounded on it. You know, uh, you had Matt Berger, you had Matt Murphy, um, and, you know, they put this package together uh, for the enthusiasts, and, you know, they really, they really did their homework, and, uh, you know, and we're pretty grateful to be part of it. All right, so this... Uh, has what's called the C5R 427. It's a Phase 3X package. Um, pretty much is there at the time was uh, uh, pretty much the most po powerful power, uh, power plant they had available. Uh, it's based on a, a C5R Corvette uh, a race block, and uh, it has you know all the great pieces inside. Uh, they did a really great job on this, and uh, it works. How much horsepower are you looking at? Uh, this is, uh, it's basically 630 horsepower and 600 horsepower, 600 uh, foot-pounds of torque. And uh, for back in 2002, mm -hmm. that's pretty oh, much right, a big right, deal. Right, right, it, right. It's a big, big deal back then. So where have you enjoyed this on, like, any track? Yeah, well, we haven't, we, you know, technically, uh, it was, Dick Harrell's more of a drag race uh, uh, yeah, situation, but we actually took it to Road Atlanta, just did a couple laps just for, uh, you know, a fun time. And uh, I'll tell you, the car really works. It, it, well, haven't driven it that way. Okay. Um, but uh, based on the combination, it should be pretty much like a, a low 11 second car, you know, providing a good traction. You know, and if you did some tuning, you'd probably get in the high tens. Okay. I'm Ryan from Greenville, South Carolina, here at the McCacken Car Show. Um, brought my car number one, Dick Harrell edition. Um, for the GMMG Gathering, Legends Edition from uh, Matt Avery, eight other cars here. Um, I'm a little bit newer to the GMMG uh, collecting world, probably only in about three years now. Um, had a passion for the 4th Gen Camaro since I was in high school. Always loved the 4th uh, the Gens, was always my favorite, always wanted one when I was in high school, never could afford one. A little bit later in life, finally got able to buy a couple 4th Gens and uh, Always saw the GMMGs in magazines and wanted one back in the day and uh, finally was able to get one. Um, got my first one, which was actually a Blackbird edition. Um, kind of hooked me on the GMMGs. Made me sell everything else I had just to buy GMMG only cars. Uh, was lucky enough to uh, own another Dick Harrell edition before this one. Um, it was a phase one car though. 
Um, got the great opportunity. A friend of mine called one day and gave me the opportunity to buy a car number one, a Phase 3X package car. Um, something I could never turn down. Never thought I'd even get the chance to buy it, especially being only a three-year collector to get the opportunity to get that car. Worked it out where I was able to acquire it and uh, lucky enough to be able to bring it here to the uh, Cack and Car Show, be part of this great event, meet uh, eight other uh, people with the same passion, uh, well, plenty more than eight, but eight other of the cars here in person, getting to see them, this big of a display in person is, uh, is amazing. And if you want, I'll uh, pop the hood and let you take a look at the engine now, too. What we're looking at here is a uh, GMMG installed C5R um, Phase 3X crate motor. All aluminum Corvette race engine, um, 630 horsepower, naturally aspirated, 600 foot-pounds of torque, um, 427 cubic inch motor. Has uh, signatures from a bunch of the original Dick Harrell crew, um, Valerie Harrell herself, which was uh, Dick Harrell's daughter, uh, Matt Murphy, the owner of GMMG and builder of these uh, great cars. Um, How one of the car to drive. Um, the car has uh, only about 300 miles on it, so okay. it hasn't really been driven a whole lot uh, by me or anybody um, around the block. A time or two is about all. I mean, it's definitely a handful to drive. Um, sounds amazing. It's uh, more of a garage queen, something to look at. Have a couple other GMMGs that are more uh, more likely to come out of the garage and get driven than this one. Hi there. I'm Mike Kerchek, and I'm the proud owner of this 2002 Camaro Dick Carroll Legend car. It's a rather unique car because it's a sunset orange metallic and there was only two built out of the 30 in that color. It's the original color of the car where it's not a repaint. The other thing is uh, it has, um, it's the only car that has a white interior. It's car number four. It's also the highest horsepower and highest torque engine built for this, the 30 cars that are built. It's called the Phase 5. and. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it's got all the original equipment it has. Besides the original build that was done on this car, I had other, other options included. And uh, uh, some of them are, it has a 410 rear gear. It's got a 12 bolt rear end with a custom chrome molly drive shaft. It has a six point roll cage. It has a Hurst line lock with a white shift ball. It has a shift light in the A pillar so that you don't have to look at the tack when you're shifting. You keep your eyes on the road and out of your peripheral vision, you can see the light come on. It has also an adjustable torque arm, and it has a spec clutch that was special for this car. Uh, the white leather interior was an option that uh, I really like a lot. None of the other cars have it. So other than it's car number four, and uh, uh, it, it's just, I'm grateful to own this car. And uh, if you ever get a chance, you come up here to McCacken, if we have another Legends, you'll be really impressed. It's a, it's a good, very good show. So anyways, this is the engine bay here of my Dick Harrell Camaro. It's, a, it's one of the only Phase 5 engine combinations in these cars, so it's really a really rare combination. And uh, I was thrilled to the fact that Matt Murphy would do that for me. And uh, it's the highest horsepower, highest torque motor that was pretty much built uh, throughout the whole build series of these cars. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to drive, it's a pleasure to own, and uh, I, I'm really blessed that I could have this car. So. And what was the horsepower? The horsepower is, it's uh, 650 horsepower with uh, 630 foot-pounds of torque. It's a 454 cubic inch where mainly all the rest of the builds were 427s. And they were 600 horse or 630 horse. So this is this one really stands out. It's called a Phase 5. How many miles? 472 miles. I mainly will go to car shows that are Camaro shows. Because you go to a regular car show, the people there don't know what it is. Where we go to a Camaro show, they, they flock to this car. This is like the holy grail of Camaros. So that, that, I'm thrilled to have it. I mean, the new generations that came up, you know, the, the, uh, the fives and the sixes, 
they're, they're, they're the new Camaros from 2010 up. And uh, there's some serious, serious cars that were built by General Motors, which, you know, they come with a warranty. I mean, there wasn't any warranties on these cars. Of course, what are we going to use a warranty for? Because we don't drive them anyways, except on special occasions. This car will never see 36,000 miles in its life. It's a pleasure, again, again, I'd say, to own, and I'm blessed to be able to own one. I'm Jim Smith. I do the GMMG registry. Um, I have had a number of GMMGs over the years. Always wanted a DeCarroll car. I saw number 18 at Berger Chevrolet in 2007 and never dreamed I could ever own that car. Um, it's house of color, organic green. The car now has about 885 miles on it. It was built for Matt Berger, president of Berger Chevrolet, and uh, it's a fun car to drive. It looks nice, it runs good, and I really enjoy it. Would you like to see the engine? You're looking at the engine of Dick Harrell 18. It has all the signatures on it from the people that were there in the day. This is 100% correct the way the car was built by Matt Murphy for Matt Berger at Berger Chevrolet. This is a 400 horse, mm -hmm. LS6, automatic. How is it to drive? The car is fun to drive. It's easy and, and runs well. It, and again, it only has about 885 miles on it. Hello, my name is Bob Martin. I own the Stick Carroll car built by GMMG. It's car number 20. Uh, the reason I c collect the Dick Carroll car is I have a bunch of GMMG cars. I have a ZL1, a Berger car. I was trying to have one of all the ones they were making. So I was missing the Dick Carroll car and this car came available for sale and I purchased it to try to complete my collection of GMMG cars. This one here is a 400 horse, uh, it's the base model, it's an automatic, uh, they made them all the way up to 454 cubic inches, phase 5, this is a phase 1 of the base model. How's it to drive, how many miles do you have on it? It's got 1,025 miles on it, uh, it's fun to drive, it's different, uh -huh. um, it's, it's a unique piece, it, sure, it definitely sure. gets its looks being a wide body. Hi, my name is Vince Miller and standing in front of one of my two 2002 Dick Harrell edition Berger supercars. This one's number 23 of 30 that were built and this car has a few unique features um, that the original owner, my wife and I are the second owner of this car and the original owner wanted a few unique things. He wanted a different color shifter ball, he wanted houndstooth interior. It's one of two that we know of that have houndstooth interior. And all the Dick Harrell cars actually have a gold bow tie on the grill. This particular car actually has a blue bow tie. And George, the original owner, wanted it to match his 69 Copo. The last thing that this car has that makes it kind of unique, it doesn't have the standard 60 wheels that are on most of the Dick Harrell editions. George, the original owner, wanted this car to have five spokes, once again to match the 69 Copo. So, with the blessing of Valerie Harrell, he was able to make these uh, modifications to this car, so it makes it a pretty interesting car. And uh, my wife and I have owned this car about four and a half years, and we just love it. Alright, with Dick Harrell number 23, um, like many of them, it received the 427 C5R race motor, 630 horsepower naturally aspirated, and I used to do a little circle track racing, and let me tell you, these things are a beast. For a street car, it's amazing. Being naturally aspirated, GMMG, for these cars being 20 years old, done an right, amazing right. job. Right. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, got all the signatures that, uh, you know, uh, 
Elaine Harrell, Valerie Harrell, and then we actually found out that apparently they had the um, surviving members of Dick Harrell's crew from back in the day flew them into Marietta, Georgia, and they signed each one of these cars when they were in the build process. So, the other car um, that we have here, we've actually had this car about eight years, and this is number 30 of the 30. So obviously the last of the uh, Dick Harrell editions that was done, and it's got about 700 miles on it, and we actually bought this, we are the third owner, so we've had it about eight years, and there's actually a, we did do a color change on this car, and I never thought I'd be able to buy a Dick Harrell, and I had the opportunity to buy this car, and we basically kind of took a little liberty and made it what we want, and made it 69 Hugger Orange. And here, uh, peeking under the hood of Dick Harrell number 30, this one also has the 427C5R nationally aspirated race motor, and once again, you can see all the signatures around it. Um, and I just, I can't say enough about what these cars are able to do power-wise for being naturally aspirated. How much horsepower? Um, they're both, uh, when you get the C5R um, Phase 3 X engine package, they're 630 horsepower naturally aspirated. So they're quite amazing. The, this car here actually has 373 gears. Number 23 has a 456, and it's a real beast to drive. <laughs> all in all, it, it's it's a spectacular group of Camaros, and it really, it's such a radical effort that was put in by Matt Merger and Matt Murphy. What they set out to accomplish was a very daunting task to build 30 of these over-the-top Camaros, make them available to customers, make them street legal. It's an impressive feat, and you know, again, having car number 30 here really capstones that as the effort. 30 cars were built and delivered to customers. And by all accounts, these are the pinnacle of fourth generation Camaro performance. And the only place that you would see a large group like this is at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. This is where you see these kind of eye-popping displays. And we're so excited to be here and be showcasing these uh, vehicles to own. I hope you enjoyed this special look at these ultimate Camaros, and I encourage you, if you want to find out more, get a copy of my newest book, Camaro Special Editions, which details them even more. A huge thanks to U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. Thanks for watching.